page 136, Primary Chord Study. In an earlier video, I spoke about primary chords. Every key has their own set of primary chords. There's three of them. We had covered two of them. We covered the C chord. We're in C major. Covered the C chord, which is the one chord. And the 5-7 chord, or the G7 chord. That's two of them. Well, now we get the third one. And that is the four chord. This is built on the fourth step of the scale. So it's C major, fourth step of the scale. One, two, three, four. So it's built on an F. And you take every other note. It's an F chord. So in C major, this is the four chord. And the three primary chords there are in every key is the one, the four, and the five seven. Just take it to the bank, it's good enough. You know, I mean, they're also called the C, the F, and the G7, but that has nothing to do with what key you're in. I mean, a C chord is a C chord in any key, doesn't matter, it's a C chord. Same thing, an F chord is an F chord. But in a key signature, the number is relative to the key signature. So, we're in C major, one chord, four chord, five chord, or five seven chord, I had the seven. Now, I'll talk more about these, this F chord, this five, four chord as we go through, but right now, all we're trying to get across is the primary chords, the one, the four, and the five, seven. That's it, and we play these in this piece. So let's talk about this piece. Three, four time, dotted half notes all over the place, but you already know, I hope, that a dotted half note is the same as three quarter notes. Just memorize it. If you don't know it, you do now. So in three, four time, it's the whole measure. And we have block chords at the beginning. You're starting out here in the left hand. Then the next measure, the right hand gets the. And then in the next measure, the notes are up here, but it's got an LH crossover, and it gives you the finger numbers. All they want you to do is take your left hand, LH, left hand, cross over the right, because your right hand's here, and play them up here. That's all. Music usually doesn't tell you that. I mean, you might get an LH, but that's it, pretty much. Sometimes you don't even get that. You have to figure out what you're doing. So it's here, here, and then here, and then the right hand comes back, and that has an 8 VA over it, so you go up an octave here. Because the notes are here, but 8 VA sends it up here. Then in the next line, it's broken chords. So you're here, and again, the left hand goes over up here, and then the right hand plays that C. This C an octave higher is here, so it's here. They say thumb. I don't care which finger you use. You use a finger. Top of page 137. Now the F chord. It's here. Here. Left hand goes over. That's got an AVA above it. So you go up an octave. And then the last measure, that has a 15 MA above it. That means you go up two octaves, and it's two octaves from the where the notes are written, not from where you're at. So the notes are written here, so two octaves, well there's one, and there's two. So you go all the way up there, so you're here, and here. If you have a short keyboard and you don't have that many notes, just go as high as what you've got, and that's close enough. Next line is the F chord again, but now it's broken. So it's 15 MA above this F, which is two octaves above this F. So it's here and here. Then the next one is the G chord. And we're doing the same thing with the G chord, just going up here, and then broken. All right. Try and play it all legato. That is all connected with the hands. Here, as, the, as you play this, that comes up. You can overlap it just a little bit, it's okay. And then hold that down, and as you play this, this comes up. They're all connected. And then same thing with this. Now they've got slurs in this, I don't like that. Because you'd lift up between the slurs. I would prefer you had a slur over the whole line and connected all of them together. So you gotta have your hand ready to 
go. It's got to be there before you need it because you get connected to that note here. All connected and the same thing over on page 137. I play it all legato. It's good practice. Doesn't matter the pedal's down. The pedal, I don't know why they're using pedal here. I'll talk about that in a minute. Dynamics. Again, these dynamics are really just a suggestion. They've got, starting out loud, you'll have to decide what loud is. What's loud to you? Not super loud, just loud. And then the next line, come down a little bit to moderately loud. And then in third measure, you go down to soft, gradually. Don't be soft until that last note. So that measure... You're going from loud or medium loud to soft there. Then over on page 137, the dynamics continue basically the same way. Speed-wise, this is just a study piece. It's a, any speed you want. This says on Dante, which is a leisure speed. Look at the quarter notes and how fast you're going to do those. They have to be even, and I think they should be connected. And that tells you how fast to do the others. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Don't cheat these, play these fast. And these slower. Do it all at the, really, do it all at one tempo. Now you'll notice at the bottom of 137 there's a DC alfine. Well, DC means go back to the beginning. And alfine, go to fine. Well, fine is at the bottom of page 136. They have two bar lines. I really think that should be a thin and thick bar line because that's the end of the piece, but Faber doesn't do that, so okay. So what we're going to do is play page 136, then 137, and then go back and do 136 again. Now in the middle of the page on 136, they talk about root position. I've mentioned it before because these chords make a C chord. It's the name of the keys, in, in name of the notes in the chord that define the chord, not its position or where it's at. It has nothing to do with it. So a C chord is a C, an E, and a G. They could be anywhere. I could have a, I could have a G here, and an E here, and a C here. It's still a C chord. So here I can rearrange them. I've talked about this before. I can invert them or turn them over. I can put the C on top, or I can put the E on top, whatever. I can go down too. I can take the G and put it here. Doesn't matter. Call them different inversions. Well, the point they're trying to get across in this chord study is this position, where there are every other note, and the bottom note defines the, what the chord is. This is a C chord, and it's called root position. For an F chord, root position is here, because F is the bottom note. And for a, a, a G chord, root position is here. So that's which is on the bottom. If it were a G7 chord, we'll just add that. That's still root position because it's every other note. And the bottom key or the bottom note identifies the chord. G7, because you got the seventh. So just keep in mind what root, because you'll hear people talk about it, or I'll talk about it, and it's nice to know what we're talking about sometimes. So. Now the showing pedal here, you could play the whole thing without pedal, but they've got it down, so let's work on it. At the beginning, you're going to push the pedal down right after you play the notes. And you're going to hold the pedal down for the first two lines there, the two lines on page 36, and then that last measure on page 36, where you play in the C up here, You'll lift the pedal and the hand at the same time so we get one beat of rest. So that last line there on page 136 is here. One, two, rest. So the pedal and the hand comes up together. On page 137 you'll push the pedal down right after you play the chords. And you'll hold the pedal down for the, those two lines, the first two lines. At the end of the second line, when you lift the note up, you lift the pedal up with it. See, they're indicating pedal all the way through the rest. I think that's an error. The pedal needs to come up on beat three, so we hear a rest there. 
So the last two measures of that second line, you're up here. One, two, rest. The pedal comes up with them. And then the third line again, you push the notes down, then the pedal. And you hold it down all the way to the end, and, and the last measure, it'll come up, the pedal comes up with the hand. And that's how we're working pedal here. So first you learn the piece without pedal. Always learn a piece without pedal so you can hear everything and you know the fingers are doing it. What, what we do is we tend to rely on the pedal and the fingers get lazy. I don't need to hold it down, the pedal's got it. That's a really bad habit to get into and I discourage it. So I, Kurt, learn a piece well without the pedal and then when you add the pedal you only add it where you need it. Here you're adding it where they tell you you need it. Whatever. I'd like to play this with you slowly. You almost don't need me to, but I will. Let's play it together. We need the practice anyway. I'll give us three counts. I'm not going to do the dynamics, but I will try and do everything else I can do. One, ready, go. One, two, three. beginning. 